All you great people, happy Friday. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. And like we do every Friday at noon Eastern Standard, I come in and answer your Amazon questions. Anything related to PPC, SEO, catalog, merchandising, and design. How to improve that traffic and conversion. Uh, next week, I will be at Prosper. If you want to see me, shake my hand or say hello. Come stop by. We'll be at the Prosper Show. I forget the name of my booth number off the top of my head. I think it's 410, going off memory here. And uh, I also will be bringing some of my friends with me. You'll see my father, Dan Pope. He's our inbound sales manager. I also have with me Dustin Fenton, our vice president of operations, as well as Matthew Davis, our account director over advertising, and Jason Master Mateo, who you see frequently on the podcast. So hope to see you at Prosper. Um, hope all is going well there. How's my mic doing, by the way? Am I a little low? Anybody know? Uh, all right. My wife is trolling me in the chat already. What is your favorite Elton John song? Uh, now I have to Google Elton John songs. I'm trying to remember Elton John songs. Which one am I? Which one is Emily, my wife, trying to troll me on today? I'm not sure. It might be Rocket Man. <laughs> I think it might be Rocket Man. Not 100% on that. Uh, thank you for that thought, my lovely wife there. Mike is good, good. Glad to hear it. Um, all right, so I'm going to dive in and start answering your questions. Uh, if any of you still need to buy your Prosper tickets, let me know. I can give you a discount code. I'll post it in the chat if you ask for it. Uh, Mammon says, do you lower the bid on keywords that have high impressions, 2,000 plus with no clicks? I'm thinking they might be irrelevant. So if they have no clicks and 2,000 impressions, well, Amazon's letting you get free impressions. So I probably see no downside here. You're paying per click. So I don't think I would lower the bid. I would only lower the bid if I have 10 to 20 clicks on a keyword and I have poor results. So probably wouldn't lower the bid on something where I've got zero clicks yet. I don't think you have enough information. Uh, cause you don't know if those impressions were top of full below fold, you have no idea. So I wouldn't lower that one. That's a great question. Got a, uh, super sticker coming in from cool peeps. Thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Always good to see you there every Friday. Hi, Steven. You mentioned you recently hired a PR agency that's done some more media appearances. What are the biggest takeaways from them? Are you trying to land on MSNBC and Forbes? Just curious. So I hired uh, Real News PR. That's the name of the PR firm I hired. And basically, I I just wanted to be on television. I just wanted to get my name out there. Um, I've been on like 30 radio stations in the last 30 days um, and about 15 television stations, something like that. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm clogging up the YouTube video queue right now with a few stories that most of you probably won't care about. So I run a list of, of, of doing that. But uh, it's it's filling up my press page quite nicely, uh, so I'm, I'm I'm happy with that. We have had a few prospective clients call in and say, "Hey, we saw you on the news," uh, so there is that added value. Uh, but in reality, my motive on this, and I created a new press page. You can go to myamazonguy.com/pr if you're curious. Um, I just wanted to get some of the uh, some of my name out there, so when the big stories happen, they call me. Right. So James Thompson over at Buy Box Experts is constantly being quoted in the media. And I wanted that same repertoire. Uh, I want I want I want to be seen as the Amazon expert, my Amazon guy. Right. So um, got on the NBC affiliate over in Charlotte the other day, was in Morning in America this week um, and covering fake reviews and Ukraine flags just flying off the shelves. Um Fox News Radio, KMOX, and all kinds of other radio stations. Um, this all started when I went down to a local radio station in Atlanta and uh, had a good time with this this gentleman right here, Mr. KC. Uh, and some I don't, some person left a really nice comment on this video, and they're like, why aren't you on television? And I was like, I don't know. Why am I not? And then I literally, based on that one comment on this video, let's see if we can find it, actually. Might be able to find it here. And this one comment made me want to go hire a, a, a PR firm. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's scroll down and see if I can find the comment. Uh, where are you? I might have pinned it. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Actually, this is it. I think this is it right here. 
Most honest observation, this is coming from Caring Family a month ago, iconic brands like Wendy's, KFC, McDonald's, Apple, and so on became huge brands in part because of amazing founders who were excellent pitchmen. Dave Thomas, Colonel Sanders, Ray Kroc, and Steve Jobs had the ability to speak well, appealing to a wide audience. Stephen has, that, has this ability. Many founders can speak well to a corporate audience. Stephen can talk, act, corporate, yet cross over. He effortlessly took the show over. The hosts are totally cool with it, encouraging him to keep going. Wow. Steve, if you read this comment, seriously, consider pitching yourself to the best PR agent, talent agent, manager team you can find. They can at least refer you to the folks who can further develop your pitch man skill set. By the way, high power talent agents, for example, actually create large deals between corporate clients. Agents represent more than just actors. They can open doors to levels of business that can be very hard to access. So this one comment right here, I went out and immediately hired a PR firm. <laughs> so that's why that's what happened. Uh, so if you leave a comment on my YouTube channel, you could change my life, uh, or you could change the lives of many of our viewers because it affects, you know, it's all, it's all a community together that we're, we're, we're affected together. So I appreciate that comment. Uh, and that's why I went out and did that. That was after I did the local TV state TV radio station. I had a good time. It was lots of fun. All right. So we got a few new members, uh, joining us in today. I appreciate you guys joining, uh, to become members of the channel. We got Tyor becoming a member and Epperson. 2000 becoming a member. Appreciate that. We'll find your questions and, and try and prioritize some of these here. Uh, high five USA market. My product catalog changed and showing it as if it's a book uploaded a flat file, but didn't change. Seller central wasn't able to help suggestions. So we're going to actually take a look at this specific ASIN here and see if we can help. And then uh, we'll go over to some of our sticker questions here, too. Appreciate the, the super sticker coming in from Tyre as well. That's why I went to his first. Uh, so we got to type in the ASIN manually. That's the one downside of me using StreamYard instead of directly in YouTube. Uh, I think I found it. Here we go. So this is a Coke and waterproof notebook. And you don't want to be in the book category, by the way. It's, it's not a good category for most uh most things and the primary reason you don't want to be in the book category is they don't exactly let you advertise much they also have some of the worst viewing experiences from a listing standpoint so i agree with your concern levels uh your a plus content is still showing up which was good sometimes they don't let that show up on the books for one reason or another and it switches from a brand name to an author name and clearly this is not a book. So what is Amazon thinking when they made this change on you? Sorry, you're experiencing that. Selling on Amazon is totally passive income though, right? <laughs> oh boy. We all know the challenges of trying to get Amazon to do what we want. So I, you know, it's really difficult to change a category. Uh, let's, let's see if we can find the actual category. So it's coming in in memo and scratch pads. I have to admit that actually sounds correct. But 600,000 in books, Ugh, are they really putting all the scratch pads in the book category now? That doesn't make any sense. So let's click on a couple of the bestsellers here and let's see what's showing up. And we'll scroll down. So yeah, this one looks totally different. So it's a memo and a scratch pad. Uh, but does it show up in books? It doesn't look like it to me. So office products right there. Let's look at two more just to make sure I'm not off in the wrong spot. Office products. And one last one office products. So cl clear as night and day to me, you should be in office products based on what I'm seeing here. And what I would do to fix this is I would go over to brand registry and I would file a category change ticket. I believe I have a video on this one, category, brand category change. Let's type in my Amazon. Anytime I'm trying to find one of my own videos, I type in problem plus my Amazon guy, see if anything comes up uh central product category targeting let's, let's i don't think this is what i was looking for nope so i i thought i had a video on this one so all right let's do it live whenever i can't find a video for something i do it live so i'm going to log into brand services here off screen just to make sure i don't share anything i don't want to share and then all right i think i'm good now 
So over here, support, and we're going to go contact brand support. In here, you're looking for the drop down listing issue, change a product category, type the ASIN in, hit continue. Uh, I forget what the step is after this. Let's let's just grab your ASIN and see how far we can get. All right, so we got your ASIN in here. Hit continue. May or may not let me do this because it's not my item. Yeah, not my item. So you should be able to go in, type your ASIN like this. Maybe if I put my own ASIN in here. So let's try that. Let's go to Age of Sage. We're going to pull in a random item here. Grab the ASIN, go back, get help with a different product. ASIN, continue. Oh, I'm not, I'm not logged into my own account right now. All right. Well, this isn't going well for live, but basically that's where you go. Hit change product category, hit continue. You may have to do a pushback or follow up on the ticket, give them a call. But I, I would recommend you prioritize that today, Tyor, because that's a that's a huge mess you're going to have to clean up. Karen, with a super sticker, thank you for the donation. Uh, part one of two. Can you check my ASIN? I added A plus content. We would be happy to do that. So we got Bravo 09, Henry 3, Queen Whiskey 364. I've not seen an organic keyword boost on Helium 10. How long does it take to kick in? All right, what did I mess up? I think I have to go back to uh, regular regular Amazon. Nope, I'm still typing something. It's my least favorite thing about using StreamYard. No links. It's harder. So three, Queen Whiskey, 364. I think I got it right this time. Uh, is that yours? Is that the right one? I'm only seeing the ads. I do not see. Karen, am I am I typing the right one in? Let me know in the chat here. Sorry if I'm not. I'm double checking it one more time here. Bravo 09, Henry 3Q, Whiskey 364. I'm typing it in right. Okay, well, let me read the rest of your question here. So I've not seen an organic keyword boost from the A plus content. How long does it take to kick in? Three days. So I would say easily within the first seven for sure. Um, no later than 14, but three days in, that's kind of right on the fence. Uh, based on the fact that when I type your ASIN in and the product doesn't come up, assuming I'm in the right market, if you're in the US market here, maybe you have a hidden suppression. This is what happens in a hidden suppression standpoint. We type the ASIN directly into Google. Okay, so, so this is the right product. And this is, if I want to say, this is might have been the one we did the pick food test on the other day. So let me go back. I'm going to type this ASIN in one more time just to make sure I'm not doing something incorrect. So I'm going to Amazon, type it in. Okay, so it does show up. So there's not a hidden suppression. So it shows up. I don't know why I was having trouble with it. It's kind of weird. Um, I'm in Amazon.com. Okay. All right. So beautiful listing. A lot of great things going well for you. And you got the brand story. By the way, many people still don't know. Brand story right here, this module, is a must-have. Look how look how great of a job Karen did on this. Really, really nice. The only thing I think you could do a little bit better, Karen, is, is have one of these modules linked to products. I think that'd be one more upgrade for you. Okay, here we got the product description showing a little leg there. We'll get a little more risky here. All right, so lots of big pictures, lots of text. And let's look at the... When, when Karen, when you checked on the keyword results, did you um, did you refresh your Cerebro, like pull a new search? So we're indexed for 586. That is really low, actually. So A plus content should get that up to a thousand. Let's see how long the product's been live for. So it's been live almost 90 days, basically Christmas. Went out of stock there briefly for a day or two or something happened right there. BSR looks okay. Price is on the higher side right now. Not a lot of sales. So what I would do, Karen, is I would spend like one or two thousand dollars on ads on some really generic keywords in your category. So if we look at the Cerebro list here, and so what is this? A massage tool. Uh, so if we look down the list, what you're indexing for right now is all over the place lymphatic massage brush let's 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 sort this by search volume here all over the place tiktok made me buy it 
sixty thousand people searching this. What the heck trend is this? I'm I'm getting distracted. <laughs> TikTok made me buy it. Okay, all righty then. What a foot peel. Oh, oh, foot peel. Um, lots of the pink stuff. I actually talked to those guys before. I think. Uh, all right. So I'm getting really distracted by TikTok made me buy it because I had no idea that sixty thousand people are searching that. But you are organically ranked, Karen, 46 for that. You might want to go all in on that. Let's go back to your listing. Let's type in TikTok. You're not even using the word TikTok, and you're somehow indexed at position 46 for TikTok, maybe buy it. So, Karen, there's something here. You need to look into this one. I would I would put TikTok, maybe buy it somewhere on your listing for sure. If you could get in the top 10 for a 60,000 search term, you're going to be off the uh, off to the races so if we scroll down here would there be massage tools that looks like a pretty good one you are advertising on this so you got rank 57 uh but you're not indexing for it so if we look at the term itself yep, let's go to your listing here you are using exact match on that fantastic so you're doing the right thing you're indexing on some correct keywords you're advertising on it but you're not indexing for it so it's really unusual this is, um, Karen, I mean, you're you're several months into this launch. You're at a low keyword count for indexing. I would expect better results from here. Um, so uh, I think uh, I think that's interesting to see. Cool. Uh, so I, I, I think give it a little bit more time, maybe spend a little bit more on ads, and I think you'll see a turnaround on this one, Karen. Uh, and, if, and if we're the ones that built the A plus content, let me know. Uh, we might have been. I have to reorder soon, but I want to swap the brush out with a different accessory item. When I swap the brush out, can I keep the same skew or just change the images? Yes, you can. Um, I would duplicate the skew and keep the same ASIN. That's what I would do. And that way, when you ship in, it's going to be on the second skew duplicated on the same ASIN. I, don't, I, I do duplicate SKUs on the same ASIN all the time for transitionary issues like this. And then that way you can keep the stock separated out. So let me know how that goes for you. What do you guys think of the bald head? Yeah, I decided to be a me too of uh, Jason Master Mateo. We could put a photo of him next to me side by side. We look like twinners right now. Uh, decided to shave it off on a whim just for funsies. Uh, we, got a, we got a new member coming in from Fahad. Thanks for joining the channel. A lot of questions in queue, and I and I started out slow going in depth on some questions. We'll see what we can do. Uh, Karen had a few clarifying comments. It's so weird when you search my ASIN, it didn't show up. I know that's usually the sign of a suppressed ASIN issue. Uh, I think may have a hidden suppression because of the main image. Karen, now that I think about this, when I, I want to look into this a little bit more with you. So with the ASIN, when I search it in regular Amazon.com, that's it. That's it. Okay, I just remembered. If your ASIN only shows up in a subcategory search, notice how I'm in house and house and health holes right here, and it does show up, shows up right there. But when I'm on Amazon.com, it does not. That is the textbook definition of a of a of a uh, hidden suppression. I just forgot until right now. So you definitely need to update the main image. This is the number one problem you have. I would ditch the greenery. Do you see how the green goes off the the main image? That's the number one problem. Uh, if you switch that out, just literally just crop that out and reload it and then search your ASIN on .com and it comes up, problem solved. If it doesn't, edit it some more. So I'm really glad you asked this question today because a hidden suppression like this is devastating to a listing. All right, we got some uh, high rollers coming in. Ruben, always good to see you. I appreciate all the, all the stickers you donate to the channel. Hi, Steven. Last week of February, we had a huge decrease on our ROAS and ACOS jumped on otherwise very successful campaigns. We are clueless what could have caused it, working hard to bring the ROAS back. Okay, follow up. My brand manager's response was an attack to our ASINs. Click waste by competition. Can this be a factor? It could, but the, uh, the spike on the data you would have to analyze it on the back end to look and be like, were there like 50 wasted clicks all of a sudden on a, on like a subset? If that's the case, report it to Amazon for click fraud. They will re reimburse you for those clicks. Um, but if you went from like 20% ACoS to 40% ACoS, that's probably not a good sign of that. 
um, unless you're at like, you know, 50,000 in ad spend and going from that kind of a cost. But if you're like five to $10,000 in ad spend and you just have some, some rough waters and your a cost doubles, um, that may not be indicative of, of click fraud. So depending on how bad it is, what the sheer volume it is, could be uh, something to look into here. So one of the things I would do, Ruben, is I would try and find where the clicks came from or where the performance really got weak. Was it across the board? If it's across the board, across all keywords, that may have nothing to do with, um, with click fraud. That might just have something to do with the economy. Gas prices are at record highs right now. I don't know if anybody tried to fill up their tank this week. Holy crap, right? Uh, and uh, trying to hold back the government rent. It's it's like it's like trying to come up right now. It's like you know, it's stuck in the throat. Like let me out, let me out. Government rent here it comes twenty five percent inflation rates. <laughs> um, all right, so so uh, Ruben, yes. Uh, if it's all if it's across the chain, right there. Um, all government rants are because self-inflicted government problems. All of our crises are inflicted by the government, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's it's still stuck in the throat. <laughs> all right, back to business. ROAS, how can we bring up the ROAS back? I, I think you need to understand if it's specifically isolated or across across the uh, the whole account. Uh because last week of Feb, uh, you you saw that challenge come in, right? That that coincides to some world events, does it not? Uh, what kind of item do you sell? Were were people just like, you know, did the weather get better, right? So I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, some of the nicest weather we've seen in four months hit us last week, and the sales for most of our accounts went down, uh, and that's because changes of seasons, uh, holidays can frequently adjust things up and down, right? So when, if you sell clothing, for example, you're going into your busy season right now. The number one time people buy new clothes is when they have warm weather come out or cold weather transversely in the fall. So busy season starting for those guys, you sell swimsuits, your busy season's about a month out. Everybody's going to be buying a swimsuit here, right? But if you're selling something that's an indoor item right now, you might see some, some weakness. Uh, you also might see weakness in general just because the economy is absolutely falling off a cliff right now due to those government challenges and uh, self-inflicted government challenges. And, and so if that's the case, you might just have to bet long on the inventory and just hold for, for some better water when, when the economy shifts back upward because the economy will recover. Uh, but but right now, uh, I see a lot of negative signs. I see a lot of negative issues. Still fine to sell on Amazon, right? Like you still weather that. You have to. You got to run your business, right? But you have to uh, maybe pull the ads back a, t a titch uh, and maybe uh, be ready for, for some soft conversion rates for a few bits. Just Jay, bald heads for the win. Yeah. Rub the head for good luck. Is that how it works? Uh, all right. So what's with the lazy camera pick listing there? Lazy camera pick. I don't know. Are you talking about talking about my kid picture on the side there or camera pick listing there? I'm not sure what the reference is. Let me know. Uh, Ruben also clarifies my brand manager's response was an attack. Click waste by competition. I think we I think we read that. Yeah. OK, that was a copy. Uh, let's go to the next one in here. Thanks for the input. I didn't notice a few anomalies of inventory related, but wanted to hear your thoughts. Very niche item. And our brand is dominating. Um, so yeah, that, that brings up another good point, Ruben. Another thing you could do is you could run um, a ranking report, see how you are compared to your competitors. Are they having the same challenges? Right? So for example, um, we have a face mask client all the time. It's up and down. Hey, COVID's a problem. Mass sales go up. COVID's not a problem. Mass sales go down, right? And right now, CDC's like, masks are useless. So here we are. Uh, and so sales are, are plummeting. And so we get concerned comments all the time about their sales. And so in interacting, we go look at how they're doing against their competitor. And quite frankly, 
almost every single time, nine out of 10 times, their listing is doing the same thing all of the other listings are doing. And so there's not a problem, not a concern. So, so those anomalies, depending on like how you're doing compared to other uh, parts of of the business, how the rest of the sellers are doing on Amazon could be a major factor for that. Um, all right. So let's see if we got other stickers in queue. Otherwise, I'll get to the member questions next. I think that is all of them. All right. So we're going to go to the, oh, we got one more here. Wish, thank you for the super sticker. I don't see the accompanying question, but I'll look for it. Not finding it. Uh, but thank you for the donation. If you're just trying to be a nice guy, I appreciate that too. All right. So we're going to go to the top here. Mommin says, uh, I'm moving, converting keyword from auto campaign to an exact match campaign. I don't like the phrase moving. Don't move it. Add it, but keep it where it's at. If it's working in an auto campaign, why in the world would you slough it off? Why? Keep it where it's working. Add it as an exact match to the second campaign. Do that. That's a good move but don't remove it from the auto. Should you run it as a phrase as well? I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, phrase or exact. Depend, it depends on what the phrase is, right? So if, if you're like, I want to do tweezers, I wouldn't do phrase on that, right? If you're moving that from an auto, I'd be, be a little bit more careful. But if it's you know two or three words long and it's very topical, like funny wine glass, for example, for one of my products, absolutely would break that out and do a phrase batch. Exact when in doubt phrase if you feel like there's lots of good cursory search terms. Look at the search term report to make that determination. Great question. Uh, let's go down to cool peeps. How do I match a bad review with their order number so we can send them an email to address their issue? You can't. Uh, Amazon has taken away your ability to market your own customers. It's not possible. Unfortunately, you could try looking them up by their name, but you only get first name now. And it's a little rough. So uh, you probably will not. You can't even reply to the product review these days. It stinks, but that's that's what it is. There's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. I'm trying to break out my old campaign from having 50 keywords to just 10 to 15 keywords each taking forever manually. Any shortcuts? Yes. Do a template upload when you do campaign restructuring. Also, if you have an old campaign with 50 keywords and it's working, leave it alone. Just make a new campaign with 10 keywords that are not getting impressions on the overly keyworded uh, prior advertising campaign. So uh, I'm not sure if you track with what I just followed, but basically what I'm saying is don't mess with campaigns that work, create new ones and duplicate what works on the old ones and try and improve it. In addition to that, if you have 50 keywords on a campaign, you are cannibalizing the keywords within that ad group. So what that means is, is that ad group, it's not getting all of those keywords traction. So what you would do is take some of the keywords that are not getting impressions on that campaign or that ad group and make a new campaign and ad group with those keywords. So lots of work in, in, in your, uh, your future there, cool peeps, but check that out. Abdallah says, and when, when to raise the price of a new launch seasonal product? Selling for lower price to gain sales velocity. Great idea. Ranked at the top of main keywords. Got five reviews. Season is five days ahead. I would raise the price right now. This is the perfect time to do it. Great question, Abdallah. How much should you raise it? I would raise it probably uh, 20% right now. Right now is when I would do that. Lee Spates, how do you retarget your customers? I heard you say it before in an existing video. Let's show them. Let's show them how we do it. So I'm going to go over to my campaign manager, and I'm going to show you the campaign type you need to set up. So off screen, I was just sitting create campaign. In here, you can see here are your campaign types. Now, you do need a trademark and brand registry for this. Uh, if you don't have that, here is my plug for trademarks. Go over to myamazonguy.com. And click on services, trademark registration, U.S. trademark to get your brand registry in under seven days. 650 of you have hired us to do that. It's a great service, especially if you're launching a second brand. All right. So sponsored display. This particular uh, technique will allow you to do retargeting. So in here, you go to create new campaign. So let's say I wanted to do retargeting for this handmade soap this artisan soap I sell. I'm going to click on the listing so you guys know what I'm talking about. This is my newest one. This is brand new, in fact. 
I uh, wonder if I even have my advertising up for this one yet because it's so new. So this is called the Galactic Box. Uh, we don't even have this optimized yet. All right. <laughs> so this is so brand new. We probably don't have anything done. So I was trying to go for like some Star Wars themed here with my Galactic Box. Uh, good and evil. So like red and black for Darth Vader and Sith Lord colors and blue and green for Luke Skywalker and Jedi colors, right? So that's what I'm going for without actually saying Star Wars. Um, so we'll make sure the imagery catches up. So we'll put that on the list, in fact. I'm uh, gonna, gonna ping my guys and ask them where it's at. Where are we with Galactic Box Star Wars type imagery design? All right, so I've tagged my team on that one. All right, so in here, display campaigns will allow you to retarget. There are a variety of different display campaigns. So you have dynamic search segments here similar to advertised products. You've got product category targets inside of here as well. And if we scroll to the top and look for audiences, there we go, select that. Down here, you can optimize for reach, page visits, and conversions. And in the audience types, there are Amazon audiences. So inside of here, you can see like lifestyle, interest, life events. So if I want to target people who just had a, a baby, I could hit new parent right there. Boom. Okay. So there's that available to you. And then uh, let's see if I can back out of that. And right here is the answer to your question. Views, remarketing, and purchases, remarketing. This is how you target your current customers. Views if they viewed the product. So I went to the product like this. I did not buy. I left. You can retarget them with remarketing. Purchase remarketing. I went to the product. I bought it. And you can remarket me at a later point. So this is what you would select for that. You can change the look back window. Look how awesome this is. Look back window of one year. Well, you bought something from me a year ago. I bet you'd probably buy this one. So let's do that. Let's set it up together today. Let's do that for my new box. It's not optimized and is live probably before it should be. So related to products, remarketing, I want uh, 165 days, 365 days here on the look back window. And we're going to hit add, purchase remarketing, perfect, related, advertised products, boom, boom. Going to hit that in here. And then I want to change the 30 day look back window and delete those out. Okay, so I'm going to go for a dollar five bid here. And what it says is advertised products and related to advertised products. So, what I'm hoping this one does, but I'm not 100% on it, is that somebody bought one of my other soaps would come back and buy this. So I'm going to ditch that one because this is the one I want. I want if you bought one of my other soaps, you can buy this one too. Okay. You can customize your creative. You can load like a brand logo and stuff like that. We're just going to go with the simple one just for time today. But here you can see what the ad preview looks like. And you can see, you know, in there. So if I wanted to like add a headline, buy more soap, right? Let's hit launch campaign. All right. So that was how to set up a remarketing video. Went down a couple of rabbit holes on that one. We got another high roller coming in with George giving us a $10 uh, sticker. Hi, I purchased a trademark from Mag. Since my trademark is pending and being brand registered, can I kick off hijackers? My product doesn't have the brand name on it yet. Five Chinese hijackers. So George, I have some good news and I've got some bad news on this one. The good news is you can get fully brand registered within seven days of purchasing the trademark from my Amazon guy. So good news there. The bad news is until the trademark matriculates with the USPTO, technically it's not a real trademark. And, and so brand registry will definitely help you right now. It will definitely prevent more people from showing up and it'll get you data control. It'll prevent the hijackers from messing with the data, switching the images. That's all the good news. The bad news is, is when you go file an IP infringement with a pending trademark, technically, you don't have any legal bearing. Amazon doesn't necessarily care. So that's the bad news. However, 
we have had a lot of success in filing copyright claims against hijackers and referencing our trademark number, which happens to be pending. Depending on the day of week and what rep you get, you'll have a high probability of getting them taken down. So we do this all the time with our Canadian trademarks, right? So we also sell Canadian trademarks. Can, believe it or not, it takes two years for a Canadian trademark to go live. So we have a disclaimer on here. We, we're fast on filing it, but it does take a freaking long time to get a Canadian trademark to go through. So I personally have a lot of Canadian hijackers on my listings. I, I subscribe to Helium 10, hijacker alerts, and then we file tickets all the time. So it's been one year since I filed a Canadian trademark. We are successfully getting hijackers removed by referencing the pending trademark. So really great question from George. But however, the pending marks technically don't have legal bearings. So, so tread carefully there. Do it. They're, I hate the Chinese hijackers. I think it's absolutely uh, something the Amazon would should help Amazon sellers with more than they do. They don't, but at least you have some sort of recompense there. So file copyright infringements, reference your pending trademark, and uh, purchase some of those Chinese hijacker product and file complaints from the customer account. Also, email those hijackers from your customer account and your seller account and complain and say, hey, reporting you to Amazon for, for fake goods. See if you can get them off. Just Jay, must have been the bald head comment that got you to subscribe today. Welcome to the channel. Appreciate it. Uh, let's go to, we had one other, I think we had one other super sticker in chat. Nope. All right. Umit, thank you for becoming a member today as well. Uh, we'll try and prioritize new members and uh, donations today. Jason says, Helium 10 versus Jungle Scout, tool preference. There is not a question in my mind, Helium 10. Um, I shell their product not because they pay me to do so. I shell their product because it's absolutely the best keyword tool on the market right now. Now, I do, however, have an affiliate code. If you go to myamazonguy.com slash H10, you can get a 50% discount off your, your service. Click this button right there, get 50% off. And if you do that, I will get paid like 10% of whatever you pay Helium 10. So you're going to buy me some Mexican Cokes, some Chipotle burritos. Give me some hashtag passive income on that. It adds up. Uh, so appreciate that in advance. But yeah, Helium 10 without a doubt. I started my journey on Amazon on Jungle Scout. Great tool. But Helium 10 is for the advanced sellers. The, the, the keyword power and the tracking abilities and the Cerebro and the Frankenstein tools. They're just really, really good tools. Emily said, Sage and I are watching you on my phone at the lake, and she just kissed you on the screen. <laughs> well, hey there. Hey there, Sage. I'm, uh, you should go play on the lake right now, though. Go, go, enjoy. go enjoy the sand castles. You shouldn't watch me. Um, all right. Us bald, all, us bald guys have to support each other. <laughs> well, very good. I appreciate that. Patrick says, thank you, Steve. You're very welcome. Building on the copyright infringement complaint, what is the proper protocol? I've attempted to use the report of violation tool and they nuked my whole listing. What's the right way to do it? Uh, Kineski, you probably reported the ASIN instead of the seller. That was probably your mistake. You need to uh, retract your ASIN claim and refile it against the seller. Um, brand registry made it change so that you can't report yourself anymore. So if I had to guess, there's a chance you probably don't have a trademark yet. Get the trademark from me today. It'll save you a lot of trouble. Um, what do I think about the food category for people starting out? Low margin. Don't do it. Low margin. Uh, kitchen and home goods. First time category. That's the, that's the best one to be in, in my opinion. All right. Uh, can you do a screen share to show how to set up a video ad? Yes, I can. I don't have a video ready though, technically, but I have uh, the ability to demo it. So inside of the campaign creator, you go into sponsor brands, hit continue, scroll down and select video. I do recommend you, you do some titling of your campaigns with some nomenclature, like whatever you're trying to hit keyword wise, hyphen video, hyphen whatever you're doing. Set the daily budget low when you first start out things for the first time. 
select your brand there. I've got three brands coming out with a holster brand right now, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, we don't have it live on Amazon today, but Holst it. This is a really cool holster company I'm launching. I'm really excited about it. Um, I have uh, I have a whole warehouse manufacturing. We're gonna we're gonna make this a multi million dollar company in the next six months. I'm really excited by it, and so uh, lots of things coming on that front. That's one of my side projects. And all right, so let's go back to the video. So video creation. You select the product in question, hit add, all that typical normal stuff. And right here is where you upload the video. I recommend when you do video ads to do between 20 and 30 seconds long, no longer than 30. Uh, they cap it at around 60, if I want to remember right off the top of my head. Nobody's going to watch the full ad. You just want to be an attention getting device. Um, one of my favorites. Uh, ads of all time was this video demo right here. I believe this video type animations are now banned, but I could be wrong. Um, but, but this dog tail wagging, I thought was super clever. Uh, and so here you can see what they did. This is 25 seconds long. And then it just, just, it just kind of loops around, right? So, so this is what you could do. And here are all the specs for the video ad. It's very, very hyper specific. But if you give this over to your video guy, it looks like the length caps at 45 seconds. And you give this over to your video guy, they can give you the specs that match what you're looking for. And uh, all of these specs need to be followed to the T. They're very picky about this. Now, they did just come out with a service where they will help you uh, edit your video if you're having trouble with it. But it seems to be kind of random. They don't always do it. Sometimes they will help you. Sometimes they won't. So you can't count on it. Uh, we don't offer this as an a la carte service at my Amazon guy. But if you hire us for full service, we absolutely will edit video to help your video campaign ads. Um, so that's where you would run it. Then you can preview it over here and see what it looks like and hit the play button. And it will go live after a manual human reviews your campaign. So they actually will watch your full ad. If you reference things like your website, and have a .com on there, you'll, you will not go live. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I wanna do a, another PickFu test today. This is where we're gonna give a free PickFu test out. And Pride and Beauty is submitted an ASIN. If you want your ASIN to be part of a PickFu test today, I might select it if you post it in the chat, as well as one of your top competitors. We did this the last two weeks in a row, really like the results. Um, all right, so I am trying to look up your ASIN Pride and Beauty, and I'm struggling. Bravo Zero Nine Q Whiskey. I did the. I did miss the. Okay, X-ray Whiskey Ralph Six Sam, and then that last one's a, an eight, not a B. There we go. Huh. Dang it! Still typing something wrong in. Sorry, gentlemen uh, and ladies. Bravo Zero Nine Q. XWR68. Well, I th I'm pretty sure I'm typing it in right, so I'm not sure. Um, let me know if I'm messing that up. But I'm happy to do ASIN reviews. I think it's really fun to do them. Uh, and let's put that guy in timeout for spamming the channel. Let's go down. So if you guys have an ASIN, you guys want to get, get me to. Koneski says, trademark is filed. Wish, thank you for the donation. Appreciate it. Uh, anybody that wants their ASIN to do a PICFU test, this is where we're going to do an A-B test. You post your ASIN in the chat and your top competitor will run a PICFU test to see who wins. We'll give everybody a chance to vote on it. Uh, and we're doing this for free, by the way. Wish says, also once the new color variation is up and running, can the two different listings be combined while carrying over reviews and ranking from either of the two? Answer, Yes. Reviews are at the child level. So a child level listing um, stores the review. When you parent two children together, they are just being housed. And the parent parentage will reflect the reviews from both children together in most categories. That could change. Amazon might change that at any point in time. Um, and that can happen. But they will combine. So they're stored at the child level. So if later, if you break them up, 
let's say you have one power listing that gets 70% of the sales, chances are 70% of the reviews would go with that child listing when you broke them up at a later point. Is it better to launch a new variation color under an old listing to benefit from reviews and ranking or better to launch as a new product take advantage of the honeymoon period? This is without a doubt, 95% of the time, I would parent with an old listing. Until that, the, first of all, you do get honeymoon on a, a child variation that's connected to an old listing. That actually does happen. Second of all, you need the reviews that are combined from the old listing to get the new listing off the ground. It's very, very helpful. Not critical, but helpful. Um, and if the new listing overtakes the old, you could always separate them out at any point in time. Really not a problem at all. Um, all right, Nico, good to see you. Similar trademark issue. I filed uh, with MAG, of course, one of the trademarks, and received the serial numbers. Both copyright and trademark reports get rejected. Never had this issue until recently. It's a moving target, Nico. Just keep filing it. It comes in batches. Like We'll file hundreds of these tickets, and then once every 14 days, we'll get lucky with a sales rep over at Amazon, and then we'll accept all of our claims. 13 out of 14 days go by, all rejected again. I don't know what it is but it's a moving target. So just keep refiling it. Highly recommend that. Um, all right. So we've got a, a volunteer for the ASIN pick food test. I'd love to get this one going. So let's get an ASIN review. Um, Ep Esperin, do you have the competitor ASIN as well? I need you to post the competitor ASIN. So give me an ASIN that you want to compete against here, please. And we'll dive into the pick food test right now. Uh, so you got a dog treat category. We're going to look up your ASIN. Uh, Bravo 09, Nancy Ralph X-Ray, Zebra Frank 65. All right. So here is your listing. And you've got some Huggy Tuggy freeze-dried treats. So if you can post your competitor ASIN in there too, perfect. There's the competitor. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at both of these and we're going to see if we can come up with uh, a test to run. Bravo 00, Sam X-Ray 4, Victor 7NE. That is the competitor. We're going to see which one of these is going to win an A-B test. So option one versus option two. And yours is obviously late to the market. They have all these reviews. Look how awful their parentage is. This might this might be like a record for worst looking parentage I've seen all year. Look how many out of stock issues they have. They're basically combining all of these products to get 20,000 reviews together. That's why they're doing it. But they're not restocking half of the SKUs. Terrible experience for the consumer. Really, really don't like that. All right, so let's set up the PickFu test. And based on this, which is going to win? We're only going to look at the main image. So this one shows a dog. This one does not. This one shows a cat, even though it's a dog product, which I think is a little weird. But I like the uh, I like showing the treats in front. So that's the one thing going for it. But they show the dog. So who's going to win this PickFu test? Let's find out. So we're going to run into PickFu. We're going to start a new poll together <clears throat> and we're going to build from scratch. Which image do you like best and why, or which product you most likely click on? I think that's the better of the two questions for this particular test. So here is our A. If you think A is going to win, Huggy Tuggy, post it in the chat. If you think B, uh, we'll, call, we'll call that one the Stewart listing. If you think B or Stewart's going to win, Say say that in the chat. Let's find out which one's going to win. <clears throat> well, let me drag and drop. Yes, perfect. Drag and drop. Perfect. All right, so here's our A. Here's our B. And the question is, which product are you more likely to click on? Let's go to the next step. I've got general audience. That's fine. No problem there. 50 responses. Next step. By the way, if you guys want to run your own PickFu test, you like what you see, go to PickFu.com slash my Amazon guy for 50% off PickFu. Every time you make a purchase, you'll buy me a Mexican Coke. All right. So we're going to go next step on this. 
we're going to and make this one public. That's fine. Next step. Okay, so here's our test. We're going to confirm everything looks fine. Proceed to checkout. And I have a, uh, a demo code. PickFu gives me these for free to run on the channel. And we're going to hit apply. And we're going to run. Okay, so this is going to come through here in the next 20 minutes. We're going to have the answer to that, depending on how long my voice lasts. If you guys want to cheat and see how we're doing on this, here's the live link. You can watch the results come in live if you're curious. All right, so I'm going to go through some other questions while we wait for that survey to come on in. So we have a couple people saying, Jason says B because the tub is blue and looks bigger in the picture. Uh, so what do you guys think? Uh, Nico says, great, I will do that. Referencing his trademark question. Daniel, thank you for the super sticker there. Appreciate it. And going through the chats. Great session on the audience retargeting. Loved it. You're very welcome, Tom. Appreciate that. What do you think about the patio, long, and garden category? Great category. Very underdeveloped. For example, um, we had a golf mat client that worked with us for two and a half years. Had the most horrendous assets possibly available. And so did every one of their competitors. Multi-million dollar company. And we crushed it selling their products. We had to jerry-rig all kinds of photo assets. Like when I say jerry-rig, I'm like, take their like 500 J JPEG pixels, Photoshop in something to make them salvageable for Amazon and try and make them win, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot. So Koneski says, can you dive a little deeper on duplicated SKUs? Absolutely, I can. But I have a deeper video. I'm just going to reference that. So... Um, if you go to Google and type in duplicate SKU, my Amazon guy, you're going to find my video on this, how to duplicate SKUs for the same ASIN. And here's, there's, there's one particular use case I reference on this particular video, and that is Merchant Fulfill Plus FBA. So Kineski, check that video out after today's session. That'll answer your question there. Got another uh, super sticker coming in. From Jahil, wanted to get some feedback on my three-part question before the QA is over. <laughs> so as you can tell, I get a lot of questions and I can't get to everything. And I jumped the, I jumped the line for, uh, for, uh, for the super stickers and the member questions. I haven't even got all the member questions done yet. So Jahil, you're jumping the line here. Let's go find your questions and we'll get you in. So scrolling up, there are so many questions. I'm actually struggling to find it. Whew. We might hit a record today on questions. Uh, Jahil, help me out. Repost your question. Don't re I don't generally like... Okay, here we go. I think I found... If my overall campaign budget, 500 daily, and I have two ad groups in the campaign, how is the budget split between ad groups? Or does each get its own $500? Recommendation on number of ad groups per campaign. Great question. So 500 daily, two ad groups. So Amazon is not going to evenly split the spend between the two ad groups. So you are going to see one ad group get 70 to 80% of the spend and the other one's going to get the remainder. That's going to happen most likely. So what you want to do is typically not create multiple ad group campaigns unless there's a very good reason to do so. So for example, one reason you might want to have multiple ad groups in a campaign is multiple sizes, multiple colors, but very similar keyword vernacular. And so you might want to keep those together. That's sometimes can be beneficial. But in general, I'm not a fan of having multiple ad groups in campaigns these days. We made kind of a change in the last couple of years based on seeing better performance on segmenting out more campaigns. It's more work, but it's more performance, better results. So Number of ad groups per campaign recommended, one. All right, so that was one of the questions from Jahil. You got a three-parter I found. If I have five different scented products, what would be the benefit of parenting them versus not parenting them together? If I parent them, does that mean only the parent ASIN will show up in the top 50 in its category since they all share the same ASIN now? If I don't parent them and rank individually, it makes sense to think that the more to the top of the category real estate would drive more traffic equals more sales. So Jahil is asking about parentage theory. 
when in doubt, parent things together. If you have multiple products that can do very well in search results and have high velocity at near equal lengths, then don't parent the SKUs. This is very tricky to understand, so I'm going to try my best to explain this as best I can. Um, but we, I talk about parentage theory a lot. There's a lot to take in on this. So here is an example product that's very similar to the one Jahil is describing. I've got multiple scents of the same item right here. Okay. So if I have multiple scents, would it make more sense to combine them in a parentage or separate them out? Well, if, if the fruity is getting 80% of the sales and the others, like may, maybe the damsel gets 10% and maybe the, uh, whatever I call this one, what do I call this one? I don't even, okay, macho and masculine. Let's say they get 10% each. Then it would make no sense to, to, to pull these apart. But if Fruity and Damsel both got like 40% of the sales on the parentage to them, it would make sense to break these into two new parentages. Pull all the Damsel with something else with it and pull all the Fruity with something with it. Okay. So that's what I generally recommend doing. If you have two SKUs with high performance together, separating them out makes sense for the very reason Jahil talked about. You can show up in search results multiple times. So to demonstrate this, if we were to find a keyword that I rank really well for this, let's say artisan men's soap, okay? And we scroll down. If, if one of my items were to show up, which apparently I'm not showing up for, so bad example, but let's, let's assume that my product, there it is finally. Okay, so I have one result right here. The maximum amount of search results for one search I can ever find for a single parentage is one. I would not be able to see my galactic box, my macho box, and my masculine on one search results simultaneously. But because this product might have weaker SEO, it doesn't make sense to separate it out. Now, if I could get two of my soap boxes to the top of the search result right here, I would separate the parentage out in a heartbeat. Now, keep in mind, you also get the benefit of shared reviews with parentage, which can help conversion rates. Although I've been a big proponent of not caring about reviews in the last year because, quite frankly, there's a lot of fake reviews circulating on Amazon and it's been harder to generate them and spend time on them. So I don't think it's a good activity to spend time trying to uh, generate reviews. But if you have the reviews, sometimes parenting together is, is a good thing to do. So Jahil, hopefully that gives you the answer you were seeking. Let's go check out. Uh, so I'm putting this off screen just not to spoil it for those that don't want to spoil it. We're at 34 votes so far. So I'll, I'll go back to the pick food when it's ready. Epperson, thank you for the super sticker today. Can you check my question before the live end? <laughs> Mr. Burns emojis. Absolutely, Epperson. I will get to that one next since you're jumping the line here. Uh, so I think we're I think yours is the one we're doing the ASIN review on too. Uh, dog treat category. Can you give me your opinion on the product catalog, A plus content, thumbnail, index, etc.? PBC A cost is 150%. So this is the huggy tuggy item I think we were looking at. So so here's the here's the challenge. You're in a hyper competitive category. Anything related to pets is hyper competitive. There are only two categories that I think are more competitive than pet. Supplements and technology. And you are in a grocery item for pet, which is kind of very close to supplements, which means everybody and their dogs wants to be in this category. Why? Because it's a fun category. Everybody likes making their dogs happy. It makes people happy, right? So, so you have a huge uphill battle. ACOS at 150% doesn't surprise me in the slightest. And review counts in your category are more critical because it's a new product that they're not willing to test on their dog. You're asking people to test a foreign substance on their dog 
And that's why conversion rates are lower on new products in this space. That's why Mr. 20,000 Reviews here is dominating because there's 20,000 people who have said, I fed this to my dog. That's the trouble. Number one mistake I think you're making on this listing is you don't have enough dog picks. You are not playing into the dog. You are playing into the technical. And every single photo you have should have a dog on it. Like dog on it, you got to have a dog on your dog product. It's super easy marketing, right? So like your main image, no dog. Second image, again, no dog. You don't even have like the, the, the one dog image you have here, the dog's not even looking at the camera. You need to have more dog pics and dogs looking at the camera and being happy. Your, your second dog pic, again, not the where's the dog face? Like if you ran an A-B test on dog looking at the camera versus not looking at the camera, 90% of people are going to pick the dog picture of them looking at the camera. So these are all really, really important things. You have a lot of good content. It's not terrible content. It's just dramatically missing the biggest opportunity, which is your target audience loves looking at dog pics. You should be plastering dog pics all over this. All right. So Huggy Tuggy. Okay, it is for dogs and cats. So nobody wants to feed a dog treat to a cat. Nobody wants to feed a cat treat to a dog. You, you probably are making a mistake by focusing on both. You probably should have made two products. Take your same skew, package it two ways, call one for dogs, one for cats. Could be the exact same flavor, everything. Could be the same packaging, just with a cat on it versus a dog. Case in point, when was the last time you guys went down to Walmart, Target, looked at some Dove's shampoo, and you looked at the bottle, and you said, hey, Mr. Dove's shampoo, what's in it? And you read the label, and you say, cool. And let's say, let's say you're looking at both the men's and the women's product. And you look at the women's, which is super skinny and smaller and more expensive. And then you look at the men's and it's big, thick, and cheap. And you look at the ingredients list and you're like, okay, first ingredient's the same, second ingredient's the same, third ingredient's the same, and so forth. And literally 95% of the product is the exact same, but they charge 50% more for the women's and give you 50% less. What the heck? What's going on with that? Spoiler alert. Marketing. Marketing is going on with that. You have to sell to the target demographic that you're seeking. If, if you market to two target demographics, these are two types of people and they will not like each other. When was the last time you had a party with both cat lovers and dog lovers? It's not a thing. Nobody throws a cat and dog party, right? You go to the dog park with your dog. You play with your cat with a laser pointer. These are two separate activities, two separate demographics. I could go on and on. Hopefully you guys get the point I'm trying to make here. This is, by the way, this isn't just specific to dog and cat products. This is the same case for all kinds of products. If you're marketing two demographics, you're making a massive marketing mistake. In politics, it's your job to cast a wide tent and get as many people into the tent with you to vote for your candidate. In marketing, the complete opposite is true. You're trying to get your tent as small as possible so that when somebody shows up in your tent, they buy your product because they know they're in the right place. You want to get them out of your tent if they're not in the right place as fast as possible. Okay, so that was a, that was a good rant. Hopefully you feel like you got your, your show for that one. This is why I set the cat treat category less competitive. Also a mistake. Free stride is both dog and cat. Thanks, Steven. Single ingredients. Cat and dog is like LeBron and Kobe fans. <laughs> I like that. When was the last time you had a dog and a cat party? All right. <laughs> so, is that one going down in the meme history on this one, guys? <laughs> it might. And Burns Pope. All right. Well, very good. Well, might as well go ahead and do the big reveal on the pick food test before we lose the uh, the nooners. Here's our result. 49 in. 31 votes for A, Huggy Tuggy. 18 votes coming in for Beef Liver Stewart. So, so you have some good news here. You're going to get a higher click-through rate than your competitor. 
Let's see what the competitors, uh, let's see what the customers were saying. I prefer choice A because it comes in a clear bottle, making it easy to see the product. Versus B, the treats aren't appealing, just the packaging is fine with B. So only two comments in, they think this looks better. Great, love it. I like B because it's more formal and professional. I think that seeing the product is vital to me selecting it. So people that picked A, first two comments in, transparency, interesting. Option look more healthy, higher quality, more charming. Package and design is more appealing to feed to my dog. I like the name. It's good for cats and dogs. <laughs> that one's the opposite of what I said, isn't it? Cuter, but it's close. B looks like a higher end product. Uh, so this person was on the fence. Like the container, artwork and product. Picked A as my chop choice because of I like how the treats are shown on the front. Okay, so you can you can read all the chat and you guys can have fun with it. I posted a link to this. If you guys want to read all of the results, you can read it yourself. Uh, pick food tests, super cheap. They're like 50 bucks. Use my Amazon guy for a promo code. Pickfood.com slash my Amazon guy. You guys can check it out yourself and run a test. I think it's really important to run tests because this will get your CTR higher, click-through rate higher. All right. So I am running out of steam, but I'm going to go scroll up and get to as many member questions that I have in the queue. If you haven't become a member today and you want to sneak your question and hit that join button, because you don't have much time left today. Otherwise, we'll get you next week. Um, all right, so I'm going to see if there's any member questions I haven't missed. We did the retargeting question. Jeff, I almost missed you. Seems like there are a lot more U.S. sellers not selling on Canada, but listings on Canada and selling from the U.S., it's hard to track them down. Any suggestions? Um, <clears throat> I don't know what you're trying to accomplish with this question, but I will say this. Um, Canada should be about 7% of your U.S. sales if you're in FBA at Canada. There are Canadian-focused um, agencies that just go all in on Canada. It is definitely a viable market. Is it complicated? No, not really. You do have to do a little bit of taxes and VATs. Now, one of the fastest ways to launch in Canada is to use NARF, North American Remote Fulfillment Program. Just Google NARF, like what Pinky in the Brain says, NARF. NARF, North American Remote Fulfillment Program, plus my Amazon guy and see my videos on how to launch that. Fastest way to get into Canada without dealing with the paperwork, but you should deal with the paperwork. I think most of them use drop shippers. It's driving me nuts. Yes, they are using drop shippers. Amazon hates drop shippers, by the way. Do keywords rank with broad and phrase match types well or only with exact match? Easy answer on this one. Uh, my Age of Sage mom box that I did back in May this product right here, I also made a LinkedIn post on this today. If you guys want to add me on LinkedIn, feel free. Happy to happy to do that. So this product right here, I launched in Mother's Day three weeks before Mother's Day. And I was able to generate $144,000 in sales in the first 30 days with $11,000 spent on ads. And this is the reason why I brought this up. With $5,000 spent on one keyword broad match gifts for mom. And that is proof that when you focus on those keywords, it helps your rank because I index for more than 4,000 keywords in the first 30 days. So really, really important point, Tyler there. How do you track 1,000 to 4,000 keywords, whether they are indexed or not? What is your strategy, strategy on indexing keywords? Just Helium 10? Yes. So if you look at Helium 10 Cerebro, this is my actual data for that same product for the mom box we were just looking at. So you can see it right there. I'm currently indexing for 2,800 keywords and sponsored ads on 348 keywords. So I'm in my off season. So I slough some keywords from my high point. When May hits or three weeks before Mother's Day hits here in about a month from now, I'm going to re-spike up to 4,000 keywords and probably advertise at 2,000 keywords. You'll see that happen. And, and so you can track the keywords, the amount of keyword distribution. I like to see a one to two ratio, one sponsored keyword for every two organic. When you're in your off season on a seasonal product, however, it's more like one to 10, like you see here. But, but if you're, if you've got a routine product that's not seasonal, it should be a one to two keyword ratio, one sponsored ad for two organic keywords index. If you don't have that ratio, that means your product is out of whack. So if we looked at um, the product we did today for the pick food test with the Huggy Tuggy, 
And by the way, if you want me to do the, the pick food test on your product next week, when we put up uh, the show on Thursday before it goes live on Friday, put your ASIN in. We'll look it up in advance and do that. That'd be fun. Um, we're going to do this every week moving forward if you guys like it. Um, so let's look at the keyword distribution for the product for the Huggy Tuggy today. So they have 700 keywords organically indexed and 4,400 advertised. So aggressively trying to go to market on a new product. Not uncommon to be upside down like this, but clearly not indexing well. Not indexing well at all. There, this, this, if there's 4,000 keywords you can advertise on, you should be indexing for 8,000 keywords would be my theory or at least closer to one to one at 4,000, 4,000, right? So that's where keyword ratios matter. And then you can use uh, the keyword tracker in the tools right here. There's a keyword tracker <coughs> in the analytics dropdown, and you can see how your keywords are doing over time, right? So if I go to one of my keyword trackers, we could go to one of my keywords to see how it's doing, right? So I, I don't know if I'm tracking a lot of keywords on this one. Let's find out. So natural soap for men. I am currently organic rank nine for my product. How do I do over time? Let's look at the trend line, right? So for whatever reason, um, on March 6th, I went all the way down to rank 54, but I'm at my all-time high at rank nine. So those keyword drops could be problems. that could be stockouts. that could be issues. Um, but basically what you want to do is you want to see how your keywords are doing over time. You can see the trend lines here. So, hey, I was doing really well on organic soap. So like right now I'm in position 20 for organic soap. That's a 6,000 search term. That's a really good term to be ranked high on, right? Well, I was at 50 back in two weeks ago. So I'm seeing improvement. That's good. Now let's look at one that's the opposite. Men's natural soap. I was at rank nine and right now I'm rank 20. So going the opposite direction by tracking your keywords, you can then make judgment calls. I need to spend more men's natural soap PPC, maybe. Maybe I need to use that keyword exact match on the product. Now, this particular product's not actually a men's product. Well, this one is. Um, so do I have an exact match for men's natural soap? No. I have natural men's soap, but not men's natural soap. So maybe what I need to do is come in and rework one of the phrases on the A plus content to chase that keyword to try and index it better. All right. So that's a really good one. Good point. Did I check out the new search catalog performance for brand analytics? Some cool data stuff. Yes. I think I've done a video or two on that one. Let me know what you liked about it. Uh, Tyre says, how do you decide pausing keywords in your PPC campaigns? 223 clicks, four orders. Super low. What should be the click order ratio in order to know if a keyword is good or bad? So I'd like to see a one um, one order for every 20 clicks or better. A 5% conversion rate is kind of my baseline. If you go 20 clicks without an order, that's a problem. So you're getting a four out of 223, which is kind of half of what I generally seek. However, let's say you have a high ticket item. Maybe it's $500 item. If your ACOS is still acceptable, your tacos is still good, don't make any changes. You're fine. You're good. But if you have a high ACoS and you have poor conversion, at that point, there's a problem. Maybe you need to rework, rework the, the listing and work some new copy in or change out some graphics. Lee says, child ASIN or new listing for higher strength product and supplements? Uh, always a child ASIN when launching a new product. Almost always. Parent over 2K reviews, brand registered, same brand, own my own product. Absolutely. I would go with that. Uh, if my overall campaign budget's uh, so we did your heels already. Brian says, I recently began to manage multiple accounts for different clients. Question, do I have to open up a new account with different telephone numbers for each account with permissions? Yes and no. Mostly no. So Brian, when you want to have, uh, let's say, let's, so, so at my Amazon guy, we use a lot of group email addresses. So we'll use things like, um, you know, a random word at my Amazon guy as a, as a group email address, as a seller central user email. And then once we get to a hundred accounts under that one email, it's full. So we have to make a new one. So we have, you know, a dozen different emails in use right now because we've had access to over 1200 accounts over five years, right? So we've got a tremendous amount of project work we do and all that good stuff. So, so when you make 
a new Seller Central account, you need to have a unique phone number, a unique bank ID, and all that unique stuff. That's true. But if you are just a secondary user making a group email for all of your clients, you can shove like 100 accounts under one email address. That's what I would do if I were you, Brian. Every time you make a new group email or a secondary user on Seller Central, you do have to have a unique phone number. That's a new requirement. Super annoying. I hate it, but that is it. Rocket Man. Thanks, Jeff, on the Elton John question earlier. The majority of the unfulfillable inventory, which I have sent back to myself, is perfectly resellable. Packaging goods, all pieces in box. Is there any recourse? None whatsoever. Just ship it back in. Uh, can't do much more than that. I left the lion head. Can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> I'm selling a new seasonal product with five days till the season starts. My tacos is 32%. Uh, yes, decrease your tacos now. Preferences to fix bids versus down only in launch and maintenance situations. Always fix bids until you have 20 sales on a new campaign. Then I go to down only or up and down dependingly. Can adding variations decrease the conversion rate of my main SKU? Yes, but it's usually nominal, especially nominal if it's just a single variation type. If it's a dual parentage with color, size, and otherwise, we had a really awful one that we were looking at earlier. Uh, I'll put it back on screen here. Here's the one that we were looking at earlier. Their parentage with dual flavor and size is atrocious. This absolutely hurts the conversion rate. So... Adding another variation to that would be a stupid idea. Don't do that. But if you got just like a single flavor or single scent variation, generally won't hurt your conversion at all. What do you recommend for managing accounts, bookkeeping for Amazon businesses? We get accurate financial report and SKU reports. I use Helium 10 for profit tracking. There are better tools than Helium 10 for this specific question, but I don't care enough to get like super deep reports. Um, so I use Helium 10 myself. Recommend minimum budget for a campaign, five bucks. You could get away with a dollar if it's an auto campaign with a five cent bid. Um, that's obviously not going to produce a whole lot for you, but we use it from time to time on high skew accounts. Um, in general, though, like a standard average campaign, 20 to 50 bucks uh, a day. When to raise the price of a new seasonal product, five days ahead. We think we did that one already. We're good there. Uh, showing lifting it as we did the book one. All right. I think we're catching up to some of these. Can you check my ASIN? I added A plus content. We did that one. I'm moving converting keyword from auto to exact. Don't move. Keep both. Dog treat category. Can you give an opinion? We did that one. Good. Sorry for the dupes here. I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Uh, I want to create a new brand for a new category of products. If I were to sell items with the logo that were not in the new category, would that incur any problems? So I think I understand your question here, Basil, and that is, should I have a second brand if I'm switching categories or can I use the umbrella brand? And even though I have a trademark in one category, can I use it in the second category? The answer is yes, you can use the second, um, second category with no, no problems here. However, if you have a trademarked name that somebody else has a trademark for in a different category and you show up over there, uh, you're going to run into some problems. So just be careful with that in mind. You may need to get a second brand if you're trying to sell to a different core audience, right? So I have a brand name called Mobster, which is funny wine glasses for women. Could I sell a beer glass to men under that brand name? Not as effectively. Maybe I need to have a dad stir type of brand, for example. This is the way. This is the way, right? <laughs> I am a Star Wars nerd. Uh, Yep, we, fi we figured out Karen had a hidden suppression today. How do I attach a child product to a parent listing? Is it worth it if the parent already has reviews but the gift box? Product with a gift without a gift box and a different color. I would definitely uh, parent it together, but when it comes to kits or unrelated items with or without box, it gets tricky. Amazon's been very hostile to... Uh, to the uh, parentage types. Um, all right. Can can I see an actual Cerebro? Yep, we did that today. Uh, all right. I am losing my voice, but I think I've got most of the member questions caught up. 
Got a couple in the bottom here. And there are about 50 future members that haven't joined the channel yet that I did not get to today. I'm so sorry about that. Every time I have a huge day, it's followed by a dud. I believe Amazon does this on purpose. Do you think? No, I don't. I don't think they're doing it on purpose. I think that certain days, consumers just buy, honestly. Eli, super sticker. Thanks for the donation. Amazon released on January 24th that no one is allowed to sell customized check paper. This is a huge industry that will be very hurt. So Amazon makes policy changes all the time like this and just destroy an entire category. Yes. Can it happen? It it, it can and it will frequently. So uh, that's, a, that's a huge downer. I'm sorry you're experiencing that. Uh, why did my number one new release badge disappear immediately after I changed my price? Same with the bestseller badge. Um, I've never seen that happen before. How long have you been in the new release? Is it coincidental potentially that you've been up for more than 45 days in that category? Because you will lose your badge right around day 45 to day 60. Amazon customized said they will delete listings that are offering to add account and routing number. What now? Shouting, shutting down a full industry. I wish I had a good uh, solution for you, Eli. I unfortunately do not. They are literally shutting down a whole industry. So you do not have any recourse. I would suggest launching on Etsy and on eBay. It's unfortunate, but they probably just have a lot of fraud, fraud challenges that they're trying to crack down on. Um, so that is all I have in uh, in the windpipes today. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. If you want to see me, I will be at Prosper next week in Vegas. Come check us out. Uh, if you have a problem that you were not able to resolve, you need further help, go over to myamazonguy.com, click on solve a problem. Same day coaching available. Same day coaching appointments available. Check out all of our coaches right here. We have, uh, we'd love to grow your sales. We'd love to give you peace of mind that everything on your account is managed. Make your listings look pretty like this. We're a Helium 10 trusted partner. We're PicFu certified, Amazon accredited for advertising. We've been in the press. We've been on Fox News. We've been in Business Insider, Authority Magazine. We currently manage more than 200 brands on Amazon. So check us out over at My Amazon Guy. And thank you so much for being a fan of the channel. And if you're watching this on the replay, don't hesitate to ask questions. I come back and read every single one of them. Happy weekend, everybody, and enjoy the